Hey there, welcome to yourprettypennies.com or your pretty pennies with Tara Jones. I'm Tara Jones of yourprettypennies.com and I am a financial success coach and a financial goal setting strategist. And what I do is I help you use your income to manifest the desires of your heart to create the lifestyle that you desire by helping you create your financial goals and use your money to back it up. Tonight, we are still in February. We are still doing the debt-free February challenge. And tonight, we're going to be talking about medical debt. And this is one that I'm sure will hit home for you because oftentimes, more likely than not, we have a little bit of medical debt on our plate. And so tonight, we're going to talk about the nine steps you need to take in order to pay them off quickly and cheaper, hopefully. Um, some of the tips that I give definitely helps you shave off a couple of hundred, couple thousand off that bill, and also shave off the time that it takes for you to pay it off. I'm like sharing this out to my groups right now. As you already know, I host the YPP Money Club. If you are interested in that, definitely research or search in the Facebook um, in the Facebook app YPP Money Club. Sorry, fellas, this is for ladies only. But if you want some support, you want to get a financial uh, accountability partner. If you want to just talk about some things, use your income to to uh, create the lifestyle that you desire. Definitely join us in there. Again, it's completely free and it's open to all women who are passionate about you know using their income right, getting debt free, becoming debt free, building money into their savings, um, paying off. Debt that, you know, um, whatever it is, whatever financial goals that you have, we are there to support you, all right? So let's get into this medical debt because nobody likes it. I've been in my audience asking questions in my community and a lot of people are like, yes, let's talk about medical debt. So here we go. Um, one thing I want to start off with is unlike credit card debt and auto loans and other things like that, medical debt is usually debt free unless you have it on a medical credit card, which I do not advise. If you have de medical debt on a medical credit card, you need to treat that as a credit card and refer to the credit card video that we talked about how to pay off credit card debt. But if you have medical debt that's that's in between you and the financial institution, or I'm sorry, the healthcare institution that you go to, this is the video for you, all right? So unlike, like I said, unlike all the other debts, this one is interest-free, so that's a good thing. But the bad thing is oftentimes, uh, healthcare institutions and healthcare companies, they will send this bill to collections, especially if you are avoiding them, if you are not having, if you do not have a payment plan in place, if you are not in conversation with them on getting your debt cleared up with them, that balance cleared up, they will send it to collections and it will show up on your credit report. So that's a bad thing, you know, like they are very, they're known to like, you know what, we ain't gonna deal with this debt, they ain't gonna pay it, we gonna, we gonna sell it to a, a collections agency. So, number one, you already know if you've been watching any of my debt-free videos, the one, the first thing that we do whenever we're trying to pay off debt, whether it's a thousand dollars, whether it's a hundred thousand, the first thing we need to do is what? Focus on our mindset, and what that means is you need to make sure you have a mindset, a subconscious winning thoughts and beliefs that say, "Yes, I can pay off this debt. This debt is not too much for me." It is not above me. It is not controlling me. I absolutely can become debt free. I absolutely can pay off my medical debt, right? That's the first thing. Also, the next thing that you need to do is create a personal vision statement that includes your financial vision. Again, our personal vision statements, and you can go onto any one of my social platforms and find the videos that I have on creating a personal vision statement and financial goals. Those are your North Star, right? That's what is going to guide you into making better choices with managing your money so you always start there you start at the basics my financial vision what I want my life to look like in the next year what I want my finances to look like who am I going to become also um, the mindset that I need to have to pay off debt so that's number one and again if you need more help with that definitely go to the mindset video for the for debt paying off debt I just did a mindset video but then also go back and look at my financial vision videos and my personal vision statement videos. Those will help you out a lot with that. 
Number two, what you're going to do is you're going to request the itemized billing statement for all of the charges that you have against you, right? So if you get a statement in the mail, if it doesn't include an itemized billing statement, usually it does definitely request one because that is going to be key because it's going to lead us right into number three, which is you're going to have to look at them and you have to make sure that you were charged correctly. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. 80% of the U.S. billing statements from medical facilities have errors. Whether it's duplications of charges, whether it's false charges, whether they coded something wrong and you didn't even get that service or you didn't even get that um, product or prescription or whatever it is, or whether it's the fact that... Um, you had a canceled test or procedure, and yet they still charged you for it. All those things add up, and they are on your itemized billing statement 80% of the time. So you're more likely than not to have some errors on your statements right now if you are in the middle of medical debt, right? So definitely look at that. And one thing that I want to say is, if you have like a chronic illness or you're constantly getting sick, definitely seek out a medical billing advocate. And what that person is and what they do is they help you kind of look at, look over those itemized billing statements and say, you know what, this is wrong. This is here twice. This doesn't look right because what your insurance should show and what the, the statement, what your explanation of benefits that you get from your insurance company. So, for example, if you go to the doctor for something, they'll send you a paper in the mail that says this is not a bill. And it'll just explain to you what basically the healthcare care um, facility or your doctor's office reported to them, the billing department reported to them, and then they'll say, okay, this is what was reported to us, like this is how much we're going to cover, this is how much you can expect a statement for. That amount that they're telling you that they already paid and that you have to pay, and the amount on the statement that you get from the actual doctor's office or dentist's office or whatever medical facility that you were in should align. And if it does not, you may need some, a medical uh, billing advocate to help you out with that because they are trained to look for errors. They are trained to look for duplication. They are trained to look for things that can potentially save you thousands of dollars, right? So you might have to pay for them and pay like $30 an hour or $50 an hour for six hours, but I would rather pay $300 for them and have them find me $1,000 worth of mistakes and get those cleared from out of my name right? I've seen it happen. I advise one of my clients and one of my virtual intensives to do that. And literally working with the medical advocate, um, medical billing advocate literally saved her about $4,000. And she only paid $250 because she worked with that medical billing advocate for five hours total, like over a course of a couple of days. All right. So that is something that you can actually take advantage of. And to find a medical billing advocate that's near you, that's in your city, or it could be virtually online or over the phone, you can go to claims.org, C-L-A-I-M-S dot O-R-G, or billadvocates.com. So B-I-L-L-A-D-V-O-C-A-T-E-S dot com. Those are where you can go and they can you can find somebody that's local where you can go sit down and bring them all of your medical debt. Again, if you have chronic illness or if you have, you know, you, you had an injury or something drastic happened with one of your children and you have a lot of medical debt right now, it may be wise to have somebody look that over before you start trying to pay that off because you may be, you know, getting overcharged. 10,000 or 5,000 or 8,000 and trust me I'd rather pay somebody a couple of hundred than to pay that medical center thousands of dollars that I actually do not owe right so number four number four another blessing about medical debt is everything is negotiable so we are going to negotiate and we are going to try to negotiate that that set that number down that we owe and also hopefully get a settlement right so like I said before, medical debt is always negotiable. Call the billing department. Do not call your doctor's office. Do not call your doctor or your nurse. That ain't who you talk to. You talk to the billing department who's over your doctor's office, right? And that's a whole different department. And you ask them, can we negotiate a payment plan? Or not negotiate a payment plan. Can we negotiate this amount down? If it's at 10000 can we negotiate to 8000 And if it's at 5000 can we negotiate 
that to three thousand, and then if we can, I can pay it off right now, right? Because usually, if they if you're going to negotiate now, that means they're going to get their money up front, and they want to get their money right now or within the next thirty days. Can you say, okay, if I can pay you twenty five hundred instead of this four thousand, I can pay you within the next thirty days. They may take it because they are more willing to take that money than to take a loss by sending it to a collection agency because they only get 20% or 30% on the dollar when they sell that your debt to a collection agency, they only get a fraction of what you owe. But if you can negotiate something that's like 60% of what you owe or 50% of what you owe, they're more likely to jump on that. All right, so that is going to be number four, negotiate that down. Especially, that was another thing, especially if you are a self-pay. What a self-pay is, is that you have medical debt in your name, but you don't have health insurance. They are very lenient and negotiable on self-pay individuals, so you definitely can, can, you know, more than likely than not, negotiate your balance down if you have a settlement amount that you're willing to give them. All right, so that was number four. Number five, apply for financial assistance. So most hospitals, if not all, I haven't heard of one that does not have a financial assistance program. This is where, you know, you can either call the billing department or you can go online. So here in my city, we have like St. Mary's, we have Spectrum Health. So literally you can do Spectrum Health and then put financial assistance program, right? And it should bring you up to a page where you can print off an application or you can fill out an application online and you put in your name, your income, your information, how much you owe, your current expenses that you have to pay and other debt that's in your name um, and the amount of money that you have in like checkings and savings, things like that. So they can assess your whole financial situation and give you some leniency. Now, this is income based. So in order to get the most leniency, basically you, you got to look like you don't have much wiggle room as far as paying this medical debt back, right? Because it's like, all right, I make 3000 but I pay $2,800 in, or I pay 3000 in uh, expenses and other debt throughout the month. So, and I have a kid, you know, so therefore it doesn't look like I'll be able to pay. And so they might just excuse it and write it off. Right. And they do that because there's a charitable part of their company that allows them to do that. So if you have medical debt, definitely try to apply to financial assistance. Again, it's not necessarily based on just low income. It is based on your income to the amount of the expenses that you have to pay and other things you're responsible for. So it never hurts to apply. Even if you have a moderate income of, you know, 5000 6000 7000 still try. Because if you are $100,000 in debt, but you still have student loans, you still have your monthly bills, you still have other things that you have to pay for out of your income, they may be lenient on you, all right? So that was number five. Number six, get on a payment plan um, that is reasonable for your income. All right. So number one, we now already got our mindset right. Number two, we um, we request the itemized billing. Number three, we analyze the billing statements and make sure everything is good. Once you realize that you owe everything that they say you owe, you can definitely negotiate a settlement. If you do not have the money to offer a settlement, number five, apply for financial assistance. If you cannot give financial assistance, number six, you negotiate a payment plan with them right? So they might send you a bill and ask you for everything in full. Usually that's what they start out with. They don't start out with, oh, let's do a payment plan. Payment plan. You have to ask for it. So you have to call them up, again, the billing department and say, hey, I need to set a payment plan that's, that's reasonable for my current financial situation, right? And I want you to set that at an amount to where you know for a fact you can you can pay it even if it's under so if you can if you have in disposable income and we're going to get to that later to kind of calculate your disposable income to kind of see what you should set your number at but if you have a disposable income let's say five hundred dollars negotiate it down to two hundred dollars a month so you know for a fact even if something else comes up throughout that month and you have to put a little bit of money towards that, you can still pay your medical debt, right? Because at the end of the day, they are your med your payment plan is the thing that's holding is stopping it from going to collections. 
And that's what we don't want. This video is not for debt and collections. Again, that's going to be in a separate video that we address debt and collections. This is for current standing bills only, statement balances for medical bills only. And the thing is, we want to prevent that from going to collections therefore a payment plan that is current that you are paying every month that you are showing them that you actually can pay will stop them from sending it off to collections so that's why i say negotiate it down to where it's super reasonable even more reasonable than what you think so for example if you know you have a couple thousand to pay a month on debt we ain't gonna tell them that you only gonna say give me a 200 dollars payment plan or a hundred dollar payment plan and then you're gonna pay extra that's going to be the next step, but you're going to pay extra, but you want to do the a minimum, a decent amount. So you make sure that you don't sabotage this payment plan, right? Because they don't, again, they don't have much leniency when it comes to people not paying on time, people holding them up. Like they, they service millions of people a day, thousands of people a day, millions of people a year. They can't just keep your debt and your statement and your balance is there. They kind of have to make money. They're a business too. Even though it's a non-profit business, it's still a business, right? So therefore, money goes in, money goes out. If you ain't paying, they're going to they gonna rather get something better than nothing. So they're going to contact their connections at the local, uh, at their debt their debt um their credit agencies that they're partnered with and they're going to pay that debt off they're going to sell that debt off and then you won't have it on your credit score and then it's going to be a downward spiral so let's not even get to that point create a payment plan that you can afford every month no matter what all right so that's number six number seven create a monthly budget all roads leads back to your monthly budget all right if you don't know by now you already know the next three number seven is going to be what Create your monthly budget. Number eight, increase your income. Number nine, decrease your expenses because literally those are the three things that you absolutely need to do no matter what type of debt you're paying off. So again, in your monthly budget, when you do your income minus your expenses, that's going to be your disposable income. And the disposable income is what you're going to have left over each month in order to pay extra on that medical debt to get it paid off faster. So even though you may negotiate a payment plan, you definitely need to make sure that you have some extra cash to pay more on that than what's expected, even though you negotiated for a small amount right the negotiation and the um the payment plan is just like a cushion but you as an individual who are re who's ready to pay off debt who's ready to become debt free who's ready to build their credit and not sabotage it so we're not letting debt go to collections any longer right we are paying what we owe right so therefore you need to make sure that you are creating your monthly budget so you know that disposable income amount so you know how much you can pay extra a month right and that leads me right into number seven number eight number eight increase your income again single-handedly when i was paying off sixty thousand in debt i didn't have medical debt but when i was paying off sixty thousand in debt literally that is the thing that helped me most that helped me get out of debt the fastest was finding ways left and right new ways to pay off debt left and right new ways to pay off debt it speeds up the process it allows you to have more money to throw at your debt quicker so that is exactly what you need and this is a not about whether or not you need to kind of get around the whole interest thing because remember this is interest free even when you negotiate that payment plan at step six definitely make sure that it's still an interest-free repayment plan it is not interest on it right nine times out of ten they do not charge you interest on medical bills on your payment plan or anything and if they try to slide that in there say absolutely not i don't want any interest on there like if you can't do that we'll try something else all right and number nine is decrease your expenses Again, when you decrease your expenses, you increase your disposable income amount. When you increase your disposable income amount, you increase the amount of money that you place onto your medical debt to where it goes down quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker. And before you know, you are completely debt free and you are completely rid of your medical debt, right? And like I always say, we are not looking for them $5 coffees. We are not cutting $5 Starbucks coffees. We are not cutting coupons, right? What are we doing? We're looking for the big expenses that we tend to do. We're looking for those bad habits that we tend to make, right? 
a lot of people think expenses only means like your bills and you know what you spend at the store no let's talk about them bad habits because those are expensive too they're expensive right that shopping addiction that food addiction that boredom every time i get bored i go to target and i just allow target to tell me what i want to get today no we're gonna stop all that right we're focused the only four things that we are doing with our income in this season of paying off our medical debt is number one giving right at least 10 percent number two savings again you should have a two thousand dollar emergency fund if you don't before you even start paying off medical debt save up two grand put that in the bank because what your emergency fund does is allows you to go forward and execute your financial plan execute your debt repayment plan while the ability to absorb any other financial emergency right so if you wake up and your tire is flat or if you wake up and your battery goes out or if you wake up and somebody needs something and you need some extra cash you have it in your emergency fund to handle that instead of stopping your debt repayment process, right? There's nothing worse that just stops your momentum than being interrupted and have to use your income for something else, right? So we want to go forth, have a large disposable income, and keep throwing it at the debt. We have a you know emergency fund in place, so if something happens in the meantime, in between time, we can take care of it. But until then, we are focused on medical debt and we're going to pay it off and pay it off and pay it off and pay it off. And then the third thing that you're going to do with your income is obviously pay your living expenses and minimum payments on all your bills, right? So once that's done, the fourth thing is extra payments on medical debt. That's it. Number one, saving. Number two, giving. Number three, living expenses and minimum payments number four extra money on the medical debt those are the four things that we're doing with our money we're not we're not going on shopping sprees we could shop our closet i'm sure you got enough clothes and shoes for this season i'm sure you can mix and match outfits to make it look like you done got a whole brand new wardrobe if you don't know how to do that go to youtube it'll tell you how to literally transform your closet with the clothes you already got right no more emotional spending no more dining out seven days a week eat at home it's healthier anyway you know where the food coming from it is healthier anyway and then no more loaning money right we're gonna stop the process of loaning money especially if we are being enablers we ain't gonna do that all right so let me run down the nine steps again and then i will let you go so number one get your mindset ready number two request the itemized billing statement from anything that's in your name as far as medical debt related number three check those billing statements for uh accuracy for errors analyze it to the core if you need to definitely hire a medical billing advocate number four negotiate or offer a settlement that's like 50 to 60 percent of the amount that you have to pay and then ask for 30 days to get that to them number five apply for a financial assistance program again mostly all healthcare insurance agencies and companies they have a financial assistance program that's backed by a charity therefore they do offer that to a lot of people it's mostly income based but not all the time sometimes it's based on whether or not you have a lot to do with the income you have so no matter what your income is it never hurts to apply the worst thing they can say is no and the best thing they can say is yes and what we remain in high expectancy and we visualize that yes even before we get on the phone we pray and visualize for that yes even before we make the phone call right Number six, get on a payment plan and set yourself, get on a payment plan that is set at a rate that's reasonably, that's really, really reasonable for you to attain each month. Again, even if you calculate, create your monthly budget and calculate that you have $800 left over a month to pay on your medical, be medical debt, still put it at 200 right? Because we want to make sure no matter what happens in the month ahead, that we are able to make the minimum payment on that payment plan to stop it from going to collections. That is the thing that we want to get done when it comes to this repayment plan is the fact that it's halting the process of them sending your debt to collections, right? And then number seven, create your monthly budget so you can calculate your accurate disposable income. And again, monthly budgets are created every month. There are going to be some months where you have way more money than other months. There are going to be some months where you have less money than other months. So you have to create your monthly budget every month to know how much you can pay extra on your debt. Number eight, increase your income to make sure you have some extra money to throw at that debt each month. You need to make at least one extra payment a month 
on your medical debt up above your monthly minimum you know payment plan payment and number nine decrease your monthly expenses to increase your your disposable income because again the bigger your disposable income the more money you can throw out that medical debt the quicker you can pay it off all right thank you so much for joining me as usual definitely click the link in the description box to sign up for the financial reset get on the wait list we talk about debt free debt free strategies budgeting everything you could think of i'll talk to you guys soon bye